Schachter is the Director of Technical Services and AP for Hinkle in Irvine, California. Why are we all these California people? We only come out here when it's still warm, you know, when it's cold. <laughs> we are in beautiful weather for you. Brian got his uh, PhD in analytical chemistry from Penn State, so you love the Midwest. I grew up in, in uh, Pennsylvania, so I've only... Here to live. But he's smart enough to live in California now. Uh, <laughs> but we have earthquakes all the time. <laughs> so uh, Brian's an active member of the IPC the serving coming. as the underfill handbook an committee. Oh. Big taxi for walking. The O30 chairperson and vice chair of the Solder Pay Standards Committee, 005. Uh, he frequently speaks at SMTA events as well as IPC events. And he was on the uh, SMT board of directors. So Yes. Still on? Still on, yep. Oh. Three year term, selected in, elected in 2010. Well, congratulations on that. Um, he's written courses on underfill materials, lead free soldering, and failure analysis. So, can you please tell us you welcome? Okay. All right, well, uh, so I will try to keep you awake after you've had a wonderful lunch. I'm sure about 15 or 20 minutes in, you're going to start to. Eyes are going to start to close a little bit, and so, you know, because everyone loves printing, right? It's such an engaging topic. I know often at home, you're probably thinking, do I want to watch TV or do I want to read about printing? I'm sure that's, that's where you're heading. So, um, if you are, then maybe you need to see someone. But anyway, um, so a little bit about printing. Obviously, the whole day is about that. I think you're, you're seeing a few different other topics. Um, you know, a lot of it starts... In some cases, you see, you know, high percentages. I've seen 60, 80 percent of failures can be led to or traced back to something in the printing process. Um, it's important. It's the most common method of applying solder paste now uh, for a printed circuit board. Um, you know, obviously, Wave is still available and still around, but obviously less used. Hand soldering, selective soldering, all techniques we have in our arsenal. But by and large, paste is where most of the uh, solder is applied for electronic devices. And, uh, you know, either fully automated or manual, uh, but really the thing is about consistency. Uh, you're basically putting down a precise deposit of material. You want it to be the same every time. So some uh, printing requirements, you want the paste to adhere to the, to the stencil and the squeegee that's uh, rolling, and we'll go through some of this. Um, it's important for the paste to to flow quickly or be a lower viscosity at higher shear rates, and I'll talk about that, that property as well. And then you want high viscosity at low shear rates. That gives you good print definition. So you want a material that has a low viscosity in one case, but a higher viscosity in another case. Something that's a little uh, schizophrenic in a way. Okay, so we're gonna talk about those properties and materials that give us that, and what to look for both in the material side as well as in the process side. So, the rheology, you may hear the term rheology, a lot of times we talk about viscosity. Uh, viscosity is one form of rheology. Rheology is a, a, really a term that talks about the flow of matter. Okay, so we talk about rheology of solder paste. Um, really, it affects its performance. Uh, it'll talk to you about knowing the rheology will help you to set up your print speed parameters, the pressure, uh, how it's going to drop off, the separation, all that's related to the rheology of the solder paste. So, we talk about the, the science of the flow of matter, that's rheology. Uh, under viscosity, you can have something that's thixotropic or shear thinning uh, or, or Newtonian. Uh, and I'll go through these, these different terms uh, just to give you guys a flavor of, of what these mean and how they affect our, our materials that we're going to talk about in a little bit. So if you talk about viscosity, and this is one, one way to measure viscosity there, basically putting a spindle inside the material and spinning it, and how much does that spindle get so you have that resistance to flow that tells you the viscosity of that material. But while you're doing it, you're also putting a shear force on that material, which is important. So viscosity, how thick is really how thick a material is. Um, viscosity of material will change with temperature. Um, if you raise the temperature, typically viscosity goes down. Okay? Uh, the viscosity of the material may, cha may change with shear rate or time. So that's what we talk about, a material that is uh, thixotropic or a material that is shear thinning. Uh, paint is a good example. Uh, paints got these little particles, some usually latex or whatever, in them. Um, when you put it on the wall, you're brushing it, it goes on a nice thin even coat, 
but after you, a good paint, after you brush it, you don't want it to drip. So you want that paint to be, have a low viscosity as you're putting it on the wall, as it shear thins, but once you take that force away, you don't want that paint all to slump off and drop off, you want it to stick and stay put. So paint's actually a thixotropic material. Uh, ketchup is another one. Uh, you know, you've got the ketchup bottle, can't get the ketchup out, and you shake it and you hit hand on it. Eventually you shear thin it, lower that viscosity, it comes out, but you don't want it dribbling all over your hamburger or whatever, so it thickens back up. Um, don't confuse that with the solder paste later. So even though it's lead free, still don't eat the paste. Um, and then uh, viscosity also will depend on the method employed to measurement. What, is, what do I mean by that? So if you've got two data sheets from two different suppliers, and you say, well, this one's a lower viscosity, the number's lower, that doesn't, not necessarily true. You've got to look at the method used to measure that viscosity and the temperature used to measure that viscosity and the shear rate used to measure that viscosity. So it's not as easy as just comparing two data sheets or two CFCs and saying, well, the numbers are different, therefore the materials are different. There's a lot more to it than that. Uh, knowing the methodology, knowing the temperature, uh, knowing how it was measured will have a big effect on that. Um, you know, we've, we do a lab demo like that where we'll take the same jar of paste, we'll put it into two different cups to measure, uh, two different viscometers, and numbers are completely off because one's set at a high shear rate and one's at a low shear rate. Um, and so you can get the same material, you just saw it, put it into two different jars, get two completely different numbers. And so those are important. So you talk about a Newtonian fluid. This is shear over time. Um, and no matter how much shear force you put in it, the viscosity stays the same. Water is a good example. Most fluids are this way. It doesn't matter how much effort or force you put into the material, the viscosity stays the same. Now, thixotropic fluid, um, as you put in higher shear force, the viscosity drops. Okay, but what you don't see here is, is a recovery, um, which you'll see with a, a shear thinning fluid. Um, we'll, we'll talk about hysteresis, but viscosity reduction as an effect of the applied shear rate. So what does that mean? It means if I put force in that material, the viscosity goes down. Okay, it's very important for solder paste. Uh, it's a critical parameter uh, that we use to our advantage when we're printing solder. So if we look at something called hysteresis or that ability for that material to come back. So if you apply force onto the material, the viscosity drops. You then relax that force and the viscosity climbs back up. And the level at which it comes back up is called the hysteresis curve or the how, f how far back does it come. So if you look, oops, this should have been, oh, this will show you. Um, so here we're increasing the shear rate, it comes down. As we release that shear, it comes back up, but notice it doesn't come back up to the same exact point, okay? Um, depending on the amount of force you put in and things like that, it's not exactly um, one to one. There is what we call a hysteresis curve to it. And so that's why we look at stencil life for a paste, right? So if you're printing the paste and it always came exactly back, it wouldn't matter about how long it was on that stencil getting beat up. But some paste, this recovery rate may be much lower. So every time you're beating it up, it comes back here, and then it comes back here, and then it comes back here, and then it comes back down to here, and then you start seeing slump, bridging, things like that. So the, in understanding this, this curve, and as formulators, we try to understand that to say, okay, we want this to be as close to coming back up to here as possible, okay, but the laws of physics and chemistry and stuff get in the way, making it absolutely perfect. That's why we look at things like stencil life, work life, on a pace. So it's one of the things that we look at. It's also related to the tack time, okay? Because if that material doesn't recover, then you're not going to have a lot of tack force. And so on your pick and place machine, as you're going through the pick and place machine, the parts are going to start running around and touching one another and give you a single I.O. board, which typically customers don't like because then all the parts are bridged. Um, so we want to stay away from that. So, so rheology, viscosity, um, are important factors and it's not just, a lot of times a day sheet will say, you may see a, um, you know, two different viscosity numbers at two different shear rates and that's why. You want to know well, how much, what's the viscosity with no shear and what's the viscosity when there is shear force applied. Because we're going to do that. As I walk through the printer, I'll show you where that shear force is applied and how it actually affects the performance of the material. So if you look at, at printing, um, what are we trying to do? So we're trying to put 
controlled, consistent volume of paste in a, in a desired place on the circuit board. That's why those pads are there. That's where you want the paste. You don't want it on the solder mask. You don't want it, you know, on a test point. You don't want it, or maybe you do. Um, but you don't want it where, where, you know, in some other location. And you want it to be the same every time. I think you guys heard this morning about inspection, right? One of the things about inspection of, of paste is to say, how close is it to the, our golden board, or how, or how consistent is that deposit and that volume of material? Okay, you want that volume to be consistent because you want to be able to solder those joints together. We don't have enough material to form that solder joint, not too much so that you get slumping or bridging or other, other issues. And you want it right where you're gonna put the component, okay? So if you look at the print process here, speed and pressure will affect the amount of shear force on that amount of paste. And we just talked about shear force and viscosity and rheology a little bit. Okay, so that speed and pressure factor into that. So how fast you're running that squeegee, how much pressure there is, will apply a force to this paste and cause it to roll. Okay, and as that paste is rolling, it's shear thinning, so it's lower viscosity, and it fills up all these little holes you have on your stencil. Okay, and if, you know, if you've ever tried to, to caulk something in a little narrow hole, the thicker the material, the harder it is to fill inside of a little gap. Okay. So we don't want a thick material at that point. So the speed and the pressure apply that shear force, causes the paste to roll. And that rolling action actually helps to fill the apertures.